Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Jesverde 30 volt 10 amp DC power supply. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get this open. So here's a little tip sheet, but let's look at the manual, which should have more detailed information. So here's a product brief. It says the voltage and current value are adjustable. It comes with USB-C and USB-A dual output. You can store and recall five groups of voltage current data simultaneously. It says set overflow protection and unit switch on status with the protections on overload, overcurrent, reverse connect. So here are the specs. So this is the SPS3010X. So output voltage is zero to 30 volts. Output current is zero to 10 amps. Output power is 300 watts. And then we have constant voltage and constant current status. So you can see the tolerances there. This talks about the panel. So you can pause and read through this. And here's some different notes. And here are more instructions. This talks about USB, special functions. This talks about connecting a load. This talks about fuse replacement and product maintenance and warranty. So let's look at the power supply. So on the back, we have the voltage mode. So it has 110 and 220. So I'm in the US, so we use 110. Here's power supply, on off switch. It's currently on, I'll turn that off for now. And then on the front, we have the display. We have the knob, it turns and presses in. And we have four buttons here, USB out. And here we have the voltage out. So these unscrew so you can wrap wires around them. Or you can use the banana plugs here. So it does come with banana plugs to alligator clips. Those are, looks like just under 20 inches and the power cord is around four feet. So let's get this plugged in. Let's test this out a little bit. So I'll turn the switch on on the back and that will turn it on. So this is currently drawing, looks like 3.2 watts while it's not actually powering anything. And then we can press power and this will go into standby mode. So this is almost like when you put a computer to sleep and it's currently drawing about 1.2 watts. So let's turn it back on. So here I have a 12 volt headlamp. Let's say we want to power this. I can press V and I can change the voltage here. So this currently says 12 volts. Say I wanted 22 volts, I can turn the knob oops, and have 22 volts. Now if I press the button or if I press V, it goes to the next digit. So I want 12 volts. Let's say I wanted 12.5, so I can turn that here. Now, if I turn that down below zero, we're going to go 11.9. So when you change individual digits, if you get to nine, it will carry over into the next column. So we have 12 volts there. Then say for our current, we want four, two, five. So that's going to give us our max of 51 watts. And this here is rated 12 volts, 51 watts. So if you take volts times amps, that's how you get watts. So now let's connect this up to the light. Now this says off right here. It's not outputting any current. So I'll clip onto the terminals. Now this will get hot, so I need to make sure I don't run this long or touch it. We'll have that there. And now if I hit out, the headlight will light up. So we're at 12 volts, 3.99 amps and we're at 47.89 watts. So now let's say I want to lower this, I can hit V, and I want to make sure I'm on the correct digit. Now I can go left and I can turn it down. Now if I was on that first digit there and turn that up to two, you'd hit 22 volts. So I'll hit V, I'm on that second digit, I'll turn that down. Now I'm at 11 volts, 10, nine, eight, three, two, one. So now I have one volt going through, it's barely on. Now it timed out, so I can hit V or I can hit the button again and I can go to the last digit we were on and I can turn that back up. Now I've been running this a second and the fan kicked on on it, so it does have a cooling fan in it. It's not especially loud, but you can hear it. So if I want to turn this off, I'll hit out, but let's turn this back on and let's shut off the switch in the back. Okay, now let's turn it back on. When we turn it off, it turned off the load. When we turn it back on, it's going to be off. Now say we want it on when you turn it on. So say this is plugged into power and you're powering some kind of device or circuit. And if the power goes out, you want this to resume when it turns back on. We can hold down the out button for three seconds. And it says OPN. And if we press out once, it will change that from zero to one. And then we can hold down OPN for three seconds again. And it will take us back out of here. So now if I turn it off, 
and turn it back on, this will be on by default. So in general day-to-day -day use, you're not going to want that on, but there might be certain cases when you're testing something where you do want that on. So I'll turn that back off. I'll hold down out. I'll press the button. I'll hold it down again. And we're out of that mode. It also has some memory functions. So we can hold down the power button for three seconds. And we see EE01. If I turn this, it has different settings. So this one's set to 12 volts, 4.25 amps. Let's go to the second one. So here we can press V. We'll change this to six volts. And we'll change it to the 4.25. Okay, we can hit out here. And now we're at six volts. So if I hold down power, we can go back to this memory mode and we can go back to the previous setting we were at. Now we're at the 12 volts. I'll turn it off. I'll hold down power again. And we can go back to the six volts. So that has five different settings on it. So if there's one you use regularly, hold down that power button, go into the memory mode, set your voltage and current there. And once you set it, it's stored in memory. You can hit out and use that voltage or current. And then if you want to go to another setting, you can go back into the memory mode and access it. So this also has overcurrent protection. So we can hold down A here. And here we have overcurrent protection. It's at 10.02 amps. If we press A, we can change this. Now when it's not flashing, we can turn this and this will turn it on or off. So if you want overcurrent protection on, you can have it be one, otherwise you can leave it off. To exit overcurrent protection mode, we'll hold down A again. This also has over voltage protection. If we hold down V here, we can see it's 33 volts and it's on. And as far as I know, you can't change this. You can click this, but it doesn't do anything. Now in this state, if we turn the knob, we can turn the brightness up and down. So it has a couple different settings. Looks like about three or four, probably about three, I think. So let's try some other things here. Here I have a little motor. We'll connect that up and we'll change the voltage here. Let's change it to three, let's change the amps to, let's do one. Let's try that. So we'll hit out and the fan is turning. So let's measure the voltage on this and see what it looks like. So I have my bench meter here, and I do want to disclose that this was provided to me for a previous video, but they have no association with this video. So I'll turn it on. I'm going to place in my probes. Let's see if we can clamp these on here. This is getting a little tricky. It's a little messy here, but not sure how good contact I'll have there, but let's try this. So press output here. There we go. So we have three volts here and 3.004 volts here. So let's change the voltage. Now we're at two, 2.004. Now the motor's barely running and we're at 1.0059. So when we're at three volts, we're drawing 0 0.05 amps. Let's measure that. Okay, so I'll turn this on now. And we have 0 0.050 amps and 0 0.050 amps. So that's a little motor. Let's try a bigger motor. This is a 12 volt motor from a power tool. Clamp up to it. We'll change the voltage here. This will go, this was a 12 volt tool. And let's try that. So that is not spinning it. Let's try two amps, nothing, three, nothing. Let's try four. So we had to get it up to 4 amps to get it going, and then it was drawing just under 2 amps, or around 24 watts. Now I don't know if this normally takes that much to get it started. I did replace this motor with a newer one because I was having trouble with it. Now I hooked the little motor back up, and I want to show, it's kind of hard to see on camera here, but when I'm running this, the CV is lit up, and other times the CC will be lit up, so that way you can tell if it's running in constant voltage or constant current mode. 
So not only can you use this as a power supply for your projects, it also doubles as a phone charger or USB power supply. So we can plug in here and we can power our phone or other device. So if you're working on things like Arduino projects, while you could power it directly with these leads, oftentimes on an Arduino board, you can also plug it into the USB power. Now if I turn this into hibernate mode, that USB port stays on. So maybe you're powering your Arduino projects, or maybe you're just topping off your phone charge with this. But it's nice that that's on there. Now if we turn off the main power switch, this will stop charging. And according to the manual, the ports support quick charging and PD protocols, and the max output is 20 watts. So that's the Jezzer-T 30-volt, 10-amp DC power supply. I really like how easy this was to use. It has a large, easy-to-read display. It's easy to change the voltage or the amps. You can change the individual digits, so you can easily bump up your voltage or current by orders of magnitude. And while I was using the banana plugs here, it also has screw terminals, so there's lots of ways to connect your projects to this. And if you're working on multiple projects, you can go in there and set that memory, so as you switch back and forth, you don't have to go in and enter in your voltage and current on each project each time. Another nice thing about this is it doubles as a USB charger. In the time we live in, a lot of projects are powered by USB, so it just makes sense to have USB on a DC power supply. So there are many uses for this. You can use this for an electronic hobby, electronics repair, charging circuits, you name it. But I think that's gonna be a great addition to my electronics bench. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.